the political culture war staged a comeback this weekend, this time over whether gay and lesbian couples should be permitted to marry. Vice President Joe Biden touched off a political firestorm Sunday when he said he now believes same-sex marriages should be protected under law. I am absolutely comfortable with the fact that men marrying men, women marrying women, and heterosexual men and women marrying women are entitled to the same exact rights, all the civil rights, all the civil liberties. And quite frankly, I don't see much of a distinction uh, beyond that. The statement was a marked shift from what candidate Biden said during the 2008 vice presidential debate. Let's try to avoid nuance, Senator. Do you support gay marriage? No. Barack Obama nor I support redefining from a, from a civil side what constitutes marriage. We do not support that. Biden's remarks yesterday also went a step farther than President Obama has been willing to go. As I've said, you know, my feelings about this are constantly evolving. I struggle with this. The vice president's office said later yesterday that he did not overstep. But fuel was added to the fire today when Education Secretary Arne Duncan was questioned about the topic on MSNBC. Do you believe that uh, same-sex men and women should be able to get legally married in the United States? Uh, yes, I do. And Housing Secretary Sean Donovan in a magazine last November had already expressed support for gay marriage. White House Press Secretary Jay Carney was pressed repeatedly on the issue today. Uh, the president's position is well known. He's spoken to this. It's gotten a great deal of coverage. I don't have an update to provide you on the president's position. It is what it was. Mr. Obama's Republican opponent, Mitt Romney, has said he would back a constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriage. He repeated that today in an interview. My view is that marriage is a relationship between a man and a woman. That's a position I've had for some time and I don't intend uh, to, to make any adjustments at this point. Same-sex marriage is now allowed in six states in the District of Columbia, and the issue is also up for debate in Minnesota, Washington State, Maryland, Maine, and tomorrow in North Carolina. For more on the state of the same-sex marriage debate, we're joined by Brian Brown, president of the National Organization for Marriage, which opposes same-sex unions, and Richard Sakaridis, an attorney and gay rights active advocate who once served in the Clinton White House. Richard Sakaridis, how has this debate changed or evolved, to use the president's term, from where to where? Well, we've seen a remarkable shift in public opinion and understanding uh, on this issue, a really remarkable uh, shift in the polls over a very short period of time. And what we see from Vice President Biden and from other members of the cabinet uh, just recently, a willingness to articulate that all Americans ought to be treated the same, everybody ought to be treated equally. It ought to be about who you love and whether or not you're willing to make a commitment, whether or not you're willing to take on the same responsibilities for your partner. And everybody ought to be treated the same in this country. It's fundamental to our understanding of the way uh, the way our Constitution works. Brian Brown, do you see this evolving in, in the direction that Richard Sakaritas, or maybe in the opposite direction? I don't think so at all. I mean, if you look at the facts, uh, every state that's been able to vote on this issue, 30 of 30 states, and states that aren't uh, red states by any stretch of the imagination. You have California and you have Maine. In every single state, the people of this country have said they know there's something unique and special about men and women coming together in marriage. And I expect that you're going to again see that tomorrow when North Carolina votes. We've heard a lot uh, of the talk that, that Richard just said, that somehow the people have changed on this issue. The New York Times recently went so far as to say they think there's going to be a big upset in North Carolina with the people rejecting an amendment to protect marriage. Uh, the polls show that that simply is not the case. I'm expecting uh, a big win tomorrow, and I wonder how folks are going to attempt to spin that who, who somehow think that um, 30 of 30 doesn't equal a pretty, uh, very, very strong uh, consensus on the American people that marriage is, by definition, the union of one man and one woman. Let me ask Mr. Well, Sakaritas about the politics of this a little bit, because you mentioned North Carolina, which, of course, is one of the states which is in contention in the fall. Why is it that it seems like everybody in the administration, or so many people in the administration, absent the president, seems to be willing to speak out on this? What do you think? Well, because I think it's what uh, we stand for as Democrats. Uh, I think it's what we stand for as progressive Americans. You know, the president uh, is, a, is a, a progressive president and someone whose views on civil rights issues 
uh, have always uh, led the country, always, always been in a leadership position. So I, I think that, you know, this is where the trend is. The president has himself said that. And I, I think, you know, Mr. Well, Bonta if let me interrupt you. If that's where the trend is, why doesn't the president just say that he's completed his evolution? Well, I think, unfortunately, some of his advisors have made a political calculation uh, that this position where he's evolving, whether he neither supports it nor is against it, is somehow politically advantageous in, in between now and the election. But I think there's no question, based upon all the, uh, all the things that the president has done to advance the cause of gay and lesbian civil rights, that, uh, you know, w he believes in equality, and you can't have, uh, you know, you have to have full equality, and full equality means equal rights. Brian Brown, we just heard Richard Sakharita bite his tongue a little bit on, uh, on criticizing the administration about not making this full evolution, at least the president. But I'm curious whether, on, on the Republican side, Mitt Romney last week, or his campaign at least, was forced to accept the resignation of an openly gay foreign policy advisor who felt pressured from people on the right in the way maybe the pre president feels pressure from people on the left about his orientation, about his, uh, about be his being gay. Do you think that maybe Republicans are feeling the same kind of pressures coming from the opposite direction in the political sense? Well, I, I think that the Republican Party, it's very clear if you look at polling of Republican voters, an overwhelming majority believe that marriage is the union of a man and a woman. But I think I do agree with Richard on one thing. It's definitely a political calculation on the part of President Obama uh, it, to not support same-sex marriage right now. If you look at the administration, what it does rather than what it says, uh, refusing to defend the Defense of Marriage Act. Uh, opposing the marriage protection amendment in North Carolina, uh, North Carolina, uh, opposing Proposition 8. Time after time, the administration has refused to do anything to protect marriage, while at the same time, President Obama continues to say that he believes marriage is the union of a man and woman. And clearly, uh, that's because of the political reality that uh, strong numbers of Democrats oppose redefining marriage. In North Carolina, the number is somewhere around 48 percent that are going to vote for the marriage protection amendment. Let me so ask. It, it's mm -hmm. very bad politically for the administration or for the Democratic Party uh, to endorse redefining marriage. Let me ask, Mr. Sakharidis, do you think that this ought to be a, a litmus test issue, say, on, on the party platform this summer? We've, we've heard some people, some prominent Democrats, like the mayor of Los Angeles, say it should be. Well, I don't think it should be a litmus test. I do think that it should be in the party platform because I think the Democratic Party should stand for full equality. But I think that when you compare the two parties and when you can compare President Obama with Mr. Romney, there is no doubt where gay and lesbian Americans will, will be voting and where people who care about equal rights for all of our citizens will be voting. I mean, the, you know, Mr. Romney would take us very, very far back, as we saw with Mr. Grinnell. I mean, this was a gentleman who was hired and then frozen out simply because some conservatives objected to his sexual orientation. That's not what we stand for in this country. Mr. Uh, Brown, is this becoming a state fight or a federal fight? So many hot-button issues have moved from federal fights and constitutional amendments to fights in individual legislatures. Well, I think it, it continues to be a state fight. The, the question is really whether... Um, it, with all these state fights, what the U.S. Supreme Court is going to do. I mean, it's important to remember that we have the Perry case working its way up to the United States Supreme Court, which could be the Roe versus Wade versus, uh, on marriage. And, and the fact is the people of this country, time after time, have opposed redefining marriage. It's important to continue for the people to continue to protect marriage on the state level to ensure that the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't do make some sort of radical decision imposing same-sex marriage on an electorate that doesn't want it. I want to ask you, too, a, a final question, which is whether, when you look at this issue as it comes back periodically, do you believe, Mr. Sakharidi, starting with you, do you believe that this helps or hurts at a time when people are thinking about the economy, thinking about their pocketbooks, that it helps or hurts, in your case, a Democratic candidate to get drawn into this debate? Well, I think this is a national discussion we are having. It's an important national discussion, and, and people need to be sharing their views, and our political leaders need to lead on this issue. I, I think that this issue helps uh, Democrats because I think that uh, you know, Democrats want to stand for equality and basic protections. I think it will help the president when he takes a clear stand like Vice President Biden did. Prior to the election. I hope he does it prior to the election, but, you know, we're going to support him even if he doesn't, and then hope that we get him to do it after the election. Mr. Brown, what do you think? Does it help or hurt to have these discussions at this point? 
Well, I think it helps from my point of view to have the discussion right now. I think that it's a basic truth that the people of this country uh, don't don't uh, oppose redefining marriage because they don't believe in equality. They oppose it because it's wrong. They understand there's something unique and special about men and women uh, coming together in marriage, and that's in the best interest of society. So I don't think they're. Uh, doing that from some, some sort of um, bad perspective. They're doing it because they think it's in the best interest of this state. And I think the fact of the matter is exposing um, uh, the reality that, that the uh, president's administration has, has, with its actions, undermined marriage. It's important for people to see that. While at the same time, I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's very bad for the Democratic Party to put same-sex marriage in its platform simply because there are many, many Democrats who stand with us uh, that our organization has endorsed uh, that believe that marriage is the union of a man and a woman, and this should not be a partisan issue. Brian Brown of the National Organization. There are many for Republicans, too, who believe in basic fairness for all Americans. Pardon me. I didn't mean to step on you. Brian Brown of the National Organization for Marriage and Richard Saccharides, former Clinton administration official. Thank you both very much. Thank you for having us.